The three pipe fitting methods are often kept a secret to ensure job security for whoever knows them. I don't agree with that mindset. Even if pipe math intimidates you, don't go anywhere. I'm gonna make these methods so plug and play, even an electrician could do them. I'll show you a trick to figure out the most common piping offset, followed by one that's less common, but you definitely want to keep in your back pocket. After that, I'll tackle the final boss of all offsets, the intimidating rolling offset, and I'll throw in a few piping tips along the way. So let me set this up. When I'm figuring out any of the following offsets, I'm using center to center measurements. For example, if I need to use back to back 90s to change elevation by 12 inches, 12 inches is my center to center measurement, 12 inches is not how long I need to cut the piece of pipe between the two fittings. Before I cut the pipe, I need to account for the takeout of two 90 degree fittings. To find the takeout of a long radius sked pipe 90, you simply multiply the nominal pipe size by 1.5. In this case, it's a three inch fitting, so three times 1.5 equals four and a half inches. And as you can see here, the distance from the face of the 90 up to the center is, in fact, four and a half inches. Now I'm going to sketch it out, and I'm also going to subtract two eighth inch weld gaps. While these methods aren't specific to welded pipe, you can use these for conduit, screw pipe, copper, PVC, and just about any kind of piping. But I'm a welder, so I'll subtract for a weld gap on each side. And 12 inches center to center minus two four and a half inch fittings minus two eighth inch weld gaps equals two and three quarter. That is how long I need to cut my pipe for a 12 inch offset. And that short piece of pipe between two fittings is referred to as the PUP piece, P-U-P, and you'll hear me use that later. With the basics behind us, let's move on. This is the first method. These are back-to-back 45-degree -back fittings, a double 45, if you will. And there's a really easy way to figure out the length of your PUP piece when working with a 45-degree angle. Let's come back to our 12-inch center-to-center example, but this time it's not 90s, it's 45s. Now, why would we use 45s instead of 90s in the first place? I think 45s are more pleasing to the eye for one, but also 45s create less flow restriction compared to 90s, so your pumps won't need to work as hard to pump the same amount of fluid. A good rule of thumb when piping is if your offset's less than about 12 inches, use 45s. If it's much more than 12 inches, just use 90s. Here's a good example up in the pipe rack. We see two lines side by side changing elevation with double 90s. The reason I changed elevation to match those existing pipes there was to make sure that second story door would clear should they ever need to open it. If we turn around the other way, we'll see a flat double 45 offset. That was just about the only way I could sneak through there and hold that elevation. And if you look at the line right beside it, you'll see that I actually used a custom rolling offset to move my center line over to the right and also drop down below the first line. And those two lines stay stacked on top of each other as they go down the hallway. I thought that was a good way to see three different types of offsets in real life application. But to find the takeout of a 45 degree pipe fitting, you multiply the nominal pipe size by 5 eighths. If the nominal pipe size is three inches or smaller, then add 1 8 to that. So for a three inch 45, multiply by 5 eighths, that's one and seven eighths. And because it is three inch, we add that eighth inch I was just talking about. So two inches is a takeout for a three inch 45. Another benefit to 45s over 90s is that you can get a much tighter offset distance. Remember this number, the magic number 1.414 is the 45 degree multiplier that can be used all over fabrication and just general construction. As I sketch out my 45 degree offset, you can see a right triangle here. If my rise is 12 inches, then my run must also be 12 inches. So I just need to multiply 12 by the magic number 1.414. That equals about 17. So that is the center to center of my travel distance. All that's left is to subtract two 45 degree fittings and two eighth inch weld gaps, leaving me with a 12 and three quarter inch pup piece. Of course, you can memorize the multipliers for other common offset angles as well. 45s are very common in pipe fitting, but sometimes when I need an even shorter offset than a double 45 will allow, I'll cut a 45 in half and run 22 and a half degree offsets or even 10 degrees. Also not as common in pipe fitting, but those sparkies love their 30 degree conduit bends because they're easier to pull wire through. So I'll add the 30 and 60 degree multipliers here as well. You just saw me sketch a dotted triangle around my offset. I'll explain why. The two offsets I'm drawing look identical 
with no dotted lines, but they can be two completely different offsets when designated properly. The one on the top changes its center line side to side, while the one on the bottom changes elevation when designated like this. Those dotted lines are the only difference between an offset like this and one like this. I want to give a shout out to this old school tool that can help you with 45 degree angles. It's not just a standard wooden ruler, it's called a plumber's rule, and they're kind of hard to find these days. It's an imperial measuring stick on one side, but you flip it over and it takes that number and multiplies it by the 45 degree multiplier. For example, 10 times 1.414 should be about 14 and an eighth. Let's flip it over, and there it is, 14 and a one eighth. Here's a quick real world example. This is my welding table. Let's say I wanted to build a 45 degree kicker from this leg out to the edge of the table. How do I know how long to cut this 45 degree piece? All I need to do is measure from my leg out to the edge of the table. That's six inches. Six times 1.414 is eight and a half. So if I cut my piece at eight and a half, that'll make it a perfect 45 degree angle. And like I said, you can use this all over construction or landscaping anywhere really. Method number two. It's the one that I've used the least in my little career, but definitely one you want to keep in your back pocket. When you whip this one out, people will assume you have way more experience than you actually do. Also, if you're interested in any of the pipe fitting tools that I have in this video, I'll link them all down below and you can see all the tools and equipment that I use on a daily basis in my Amazon storefront. This method will allow you to run multiple offsets side by side in unison while holding the same center throughout the entire offset. It's called an equal spread offset or a staggered offset. And I'll show you how to do this with any degree angle, even though a 45 is the most common for me in the piping world. I have two pipes laid out side by side and both weld joints are lined up on the white line. They're on eight inch centers, but after the offset, that gets tighter. It's like five or six inches. So what I need to figure out is how much do I need to advance this pipe for my eight inch center to hold true through the offset. A lot of people over on TikTok and Instagram said, why don't you just move them over until your center measures eight inches? Well, that's great if you're piping on your workbench, but when pipe fitting, we prefabricate large segments of pipe at a time in order to install them as quickly and efficiently as possible. So yanking around some eight inch sked 40 30 feet up in the pipe rack is a waste of time and energy and doesn't need to happen if you know how to do this simple math. If it's a 45 degree offset, I multiply my current center, eight inches, by 0.414, not to be confused with 1.414 that I just talked about. And that comes out to three and five sixteenths. That is how much I need to advance each consecutive pipe to hold to my eight inch center throughout all the offsets. And there it is, eight inches on center. But what if they're 22 and a half degree offsets or 30 degree or any other degree angle? Here's your formula and you can plug any numbers into this. Take your angle, let's do 22 and a half degree, divide that by two, so 11.25. Next, hit the tangent or tan button on your phone or calculator and multiply that crazy number by your desired center to center measurement. In this case, it's eight, one and five eighths. And that is how far you need to advance each pipe. And you can swap out any offset degree and any center to center in that formula for a correct advancement measurement. You just saw me use two of these, but here's two more common ones straight out of the blue book. And I'll also link the pipe fitters blue book down below. And finally, the third method, the real moneymaker. You can set yourself apart from the average Joes if you know how to calculate a rolling offset. Let's say I need to change my elevation by 12 inches again, but at the same time, I want to move my center line off to the side by seven inches. So I have a 12 inch set and seven inches of roll side to side. I'm gonna math it out for you. I think it's important to understand how to do it, but then I'll show you the quick way followed by a quick hack to figure out the center to center distance and you can't use 1.414 because this triangle doesn't have a 45 degree angle. So this is my seven inch horizontal offset and this is my 12 inch elevation change. But what about the long side of this right triangle, the hippopotamus? How can I figure that out when all I know is 12 inches and seven inches on the other sides? You're gonna have to break out the old Pythagorean theorem from high school. Or if you're in my TikTok comments, you learned this in second grade apparently. Just write down A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A and B are the sides next to your right angle, doesn't matter which is which. So seven squared plus 12 squared equals question mark squared. Well, seven times seven is 49. 12 times 12 is 144. That was easy enough. Add them together to get 193 equals question mark squared. And we're almost there. We just need to unsquare the squared question mark by doing the opposite. 
What's the square root of a squared question mark? A regular old question mark. And what you do to one side of the equation, you have to do the other. And the square root of 193 is 13.89. And that is the straight line distance between those two pipe centers. I'm going to sketch this out now. Earlier, I was using dotted lines to designate 45 degree offsets. But with a rolled offset, we're working with a third dimension now. And that's why I'm drawing this three dimensional cube around the offset. This way you can still see the seven inch side to side shift, the 12 inch elevation gain, and the 13 and seven eighths straight line distance between those two corners. All that's left to do is throw that distance on a 45. The 13 and seven eighths use our 45 degree multiplier 1.414 and come up with a 19 and 5 eighths. That's gonna give you the travel distance from center of fitting to center of fitting. All that's left to do is subtract those two 45 degree fittings and two weld gaps for a 15 and 3 8 inch pup piece. If that was too quick for you, run it back. Now I'm gonna show you the quick way using either a construction or a pipe fitter calculator. This is the Construction Master Pro and the Pipe Trades Pro. Both of these have a lot of really cool uses depending on what you do. For the rolling offset, I'm gonna use the piping calculator. It's as simple as hitting seven inch offset and 12 inch run. Hit the travel button. There it is, 13 and seven eighths. And I'll link both of these down below if you're interested. They're pretty handy tools to have. And the last way is just a quick hack using any right angle like this square. Just find the 12, the seven, and measure the straight line distance between those points. And that'll find you your hippopotamus measurement. Now you just need to multiply by the magic number to throw it on a 45. If you haven't learned a single thing and hate this style of video, be sure to not subscribe so I know to stop wasting my time here. Otherwise, leave questions in the comments and let me know which one of these videos you'd like to see next. Till next time, I'm Drew and I'm Building America.